Montezuma II was the ninth emperor of the once mighty Aztec Empire, and this is the story of its epic fall. Montezuma's rule was full of intrigue, and the exact cause of his death remains a point of controversy. Before we jump in, don't forget to subscribe to Amazing History, and click the bell to make sure you don't miss any of these episodes. Now, let's get to the story. I'm going to warn you before we get started that there are a lot of Aztec words that are pretty difficult to say. I spent many years of my life in Latin America, and I am fluent in Spanish, so I feel like I have a pretty solid basis for this, but I can't promise I'll pronounce everything perfectly. Montezuma was born in 1466 in Tenochtitlan, which at that time was the capital of the Aztec Empire and today is modern-day Mexico City. When he was young, he was sent to a special school called Calmecac, which was the Aztec school for the children of royalty. He was most likely sent to live at this school as early as the age of five. During the years that he lived there, he had a reputation for being a disciplined student, but also that he became especially devoted to the Aztec religion. Understanding the religion of the Aztecs is so important, as it proved to be key in the fall of the empire. The Aztecs had a pantheon of gods, and it was a pretty wild variety of god that they believed in. Everything from Tezcatlipoca, whose name means smoking mirror, and his influence was over the night sky, temptation, jaguars, obsidian, which is what they made mirrors from, and more. There were also gods of turquoise, a goddess of filth, and lots of others. But the key was the belief in what they called Teotl, which in the Nahuatl, or Aztec language, is simply translated god, but not any god in particular. This could perhaps better be translated as the power of the gods, which they believed was often manifested as human beings or other creatures. Montezuma believed strongly in Teotl, and how that belief brought the downfall of the Aztec Empire will come later. But for now, We'll just say he was so devoted to the gods that he became a famous priest throughout the empire. Montezuma was also a well-known warrior by the time he was in his early 20s, and at the age of 24, he became a commander in the Aztec army after saving a group of merchants who had been under siege during the conquest of Ayotlan during the reign of his uncle Ahuitzotl. Ahuitzotl died in 1502, and his cause of death is uncertain. Some say he died when a dike broke open and flooded his garden, and a stone from one of the lentils hit him on the head and killed him, while others say he died from disease. Two wildly different theories that have been impossible to prove definitively. After his uncle's death, Death, Montezuma became the ninth and final emperor of the Aztec Empire. Because Montezuma was totally guided by his belief in the gods, rather than making decisions based on the policies of his predecessors, who were far more practical than he was, he made his decisions solely based on omens and prophecies that came to him. He began making sweeping changes across the empire. He removed those who had been promoted to noble or political roles by the emperors before him based on their roots. If they didn't have noble roots, he stripped them from their titles and kicked them out of their positions. He also removed any illegitimate children of his nobles to participate in court. They were not given the rights of those who had pure noble blood. On top of that, he raised taxes for the merchants and demanded the tribes and regions that had been conquered pay even heavier tributes than before. He sent out detachments of soldiers with bureaucrats to enforce these new payments. His advisors warned him that this was unwise and that it would cause unrest amongst the people and it did. The move immediately caused a great divide between the nobles and the commoners. And it wasn't long after that that the other tribes who had been previously conquered began to rise up and revolt against him. As if that wasn't enough, in 1505, a major drought hit the empire that caused massive amounts of crops to die. The people began starving to death. As the famine went on, lasting three full years, and began selling their children into slavery just to survive, the nobles of the empire also became impoverished and began selling their children into slavery just as the other commoners had to do as well. However, Montezuma once again showed favoritism toward the nobles and commanded that their children be set free and for them to be fed. If there wasn't a divide between the lords and commoners before, there certainly was now. While Montezuma did a lot of bad things during his reign, one of the most notorious 
was in the case of Nezahualpili. Nezahualpili was the peaceful king of Texcoco, one of the three main kingdoms in what was called the Triple Alliance in the region. Nezahualpili was known as a sage who only wanted peace in his final years. He abolished capital punishment, he made his kingdom a sanctuary for wise men, astronomers, engineers, poets, and anyone else who wanted to live in harmony. He had known Montezuma for many years, and at one point, Nezahualpili sent a message to Montezuma that the sages had prophesied that foreigners would soon conquer and rule the region. Montezuma didn't believe it, and to somehow prove that he was right, Montezuma challenged the fellow king to take it to the ball court, where they would play a tournament against each other. The winning king of the competition was somehow right. Don't ask how it makes sense? I'm sure it did to them. Nezahualpili won the tournament, and Montezuma was not happy about it. He saw this as a dark omen. Nezahualpili continued on his quest for peace and not wanting to kill people. He stopped performing ritual sacrifices of prisoners from the region of Tlaxcala, but Montezuma, in his eternal zeal to please the gods, heard about this. And he sent a message to Nezahualpili warning him that this wasn't good. Four years had passed without a single prisoner being sacrificed, and this was sure to anger the gods. Nezahualpili sent a report reply saying that he hadn't sacrificed any prisoners because there had been peace for four years with Tlaxcala. He didn't have any prisoners to sacrifice because he didn't want to start a war just to do so. He promised that next year he would wrangle up some prisoners to sacrifice. The gods would be fine until then. Montezuma didn't like this at all. He continued to pressure Nezahualpili until Nezahualpili finally sent out his sons to wage war against Tlaxcala and gather some prisoners to sacrifice. But then, Plot twist, Montezuma sent messengers to Tlaxcala warning them that Nezahualpili was coming, betraying his longtime ally. The Tlaxcalans moved against Nezahualpili's sons, taking them totally by surprise in a night ambush. The Tlaxcalans almost completely wiped out Nezahualpili's army and killed his two sons. When the news got back to Nezahualpili, realizing that he had been betrayed, his sons were dead and his army was wiped out, he went back into his palace and killed himself. Interestingly, records say that Montezuma broke into tears when he heard of his ally's death and that he mourned him along with the people for 80 days. The funeral is recorded to have been one of, if not the largest funerals, in the history of pre-Hispanic Mexico. It was in all of this chaos and rebellions and betrayals and a host of other problems that in 1518 it all came to a head. Montezuma heard reports that strange foreigners had landed on the eastern shores. At first, Montezuma sent scouts to keep an eye on the shores and build watchtowers. All seemed calm for the remainder of that year, but in 1519, Hernando Cortez himself arrived with his conquistadors. It was during this this campaign that Cortez famously burned all of his ships to ensure that none of his men could retreat. They would either conquer the land or die trying. This is where Montezuma's belief in Teotl comes into play. Cortez had begun a warpath and had taken some smaller villages, and Montezuma was afraid that these foreigners had been sent by the god Quetzalcoatl, preparing the way for his return. Montezuma believed that Cortez and his men might be Teotl, carriers of the power of the gods. So he sent emissaries to Cortez in hopes to understand better what was happening and to get on the invader's good side. Cortez, however, said that he wanted to meet with Montezuma himself. The emissaries returned with this message, but Montezuma refused to come to meet him personally. It isn't clear why he wouldn't come, but it would seem to be because he feared what he had heard about Cortez's conquests. When Cortez learned that Montezuma wouldn't come to him, he decided to march straight through to Tenochtitlan, the Aztec capital. On the way, instead of finding himself fighting every step of the way to the capital, Cortez encountered tribe after tribe, village after village of commoners who had been rejected and abused by Montezuma. They had no loyalty to him any longer, so rather than fight to protect him, they joined Cortez and marched toward the capital against Montezuma. On top of that, the Tlaxcalans, one of the Triple Kingdom allies who had become enemies with Montezuma, joined forces with Cortez. When Montezuma heard of this betrayal, he sent gifts to Cortez, specifically a solid gold Aztec calendar. This was intended to show how much wealthier and more powerful he was than the Tlaxcalans and win the favor of the Teotl. Instead, it only made Cortez and his men realize the wealth that was contained in the Aztec capital 
and want it more. Cortez arrived in Tenochtitlan virtually unopposed, and Montezuma, now truly afraid that Cortez was the messenger of the gods, refused to fight him. Instead, he invited him right into the capital, and then showered him with luxurious gifts. The details start to get a little fuzzy here. Montezuma was almost immediately arrested and put under house arrest by Cortez. Cortez claimed that he did this because he had received reports of an uprising of Aztecs on the east coast, and seven Spaniards had been killed. He said it was to keep the peace in the empire, but other Spaniards said that Cortez had been planning to arrest Montezuma all along, and was just looking for any excuse to do so. Regardless of how it actually happened, Montezuma still believed Cortez to be from the gods and obeyed him. He even called the tribal caciques, or chiefs, and commanded them to obey the Spanish conquistadors. The uprising on the shores continued until Cortez was forced to leave the Aztec capital and march back to squelch the rebellion. While Cortez was gone, Montezuma remained behind at the capital as a puppet leader. The Aztecs wanted to celebrate the Feast of Toxcatl and asked for permission from the Spanish to do so. They were given permission, but when the conquistadors realized that human sacrifice was part of the feast and they were going to sacrifice a young man, they decided to stop it. The way the Spaniards decided to do so was by slaughtering the unarmed participants and almost all the warriors and all the nobles. This event was called the Massacre of the Great Temple, and it changed everything. The Aztecs began to rebel against the Spaniards, and they took Montezuma hostage inside the palace to ensure their survival, and they waited for Cortez to return. When Cortez returned, he found the capital in chaos and his men starving to death in the palace. He commanded Montezuma to tell the Aztecs to bring supplies for the soldiers, but Montezuma was upset that Cortez had killed the Aztecs in the east and was holding chiefs hostage, so he refused to do so. Cortez, who was now in a bad spot, wanted to please the Aztecs, so he released one of the chiefs, whose name was Cuitlahuac. Cortez told this chief chief to go into the city and open the markets to bring food in. Instead, Cuitlahuac went in and took over as the head of the rebellion. Montezuma, forever convinced that Cortez was indeed the voice of the gods, was finally convinced to go out onto the balcony of his palace and address the rebels to try to calm them down. He went out and gave a speech, attempting to convince the Aztec people to obey the conquistadors. But the people were done obeying these conquistadors who had done nothing but brought death and the emperor who blindly believed them to be gods. They started hurling darts and stones at Montezuma. He was hit by the stones in the leg, in the arm, and finally in the head. Wounded, he was taken inside the palace where they tried to convince him to let them dress the wounds and for him to eat, but he refused, and not long after, he died. There is another account of Montezuma's death, although it has less corroboration, which says that when Cortez saw that Montezuma had totally lost control of his people, he had him strangled and stabbed to death. After Montezuma's death, the empire spiraled quickly out of control. His brother succeeded him as emperor, but soon died of smallpox. And the rest of Montezuma's sons were murdered by the Aztecs. And the following year, the Spanish sent an army that finally fully conquered the Aztec Empire, shattering its power and changing Mexico forever.